Hey y'all, N4H and H here. So, you know, you've seen my video maybe uh, two or three months ago about ultimate automation. Here's a prime example of it. I'm watching the Soda Watch page and I see a, a, a spot come up over here. It's over here on the right, but, and you've seen that screen before, but it's, uh, you know, somebody says, um, I only need one more contact struggling here, 14 through 36. Well, I'm involved in a rag chew here on 7150 with these guys. I have a good Ken. Oh, let me tell Ken goodbye. 73. 73 Ken in 4H and H. Where are we shopping at? I don't even know what store we're in. Uh, That's up Union City. Okay, so here's what I'm saying about ultimate automation. I had an antenna tuner, an automa automatic antenna tuner. It was a, a, a stepper motor driven. So when you change bands and frequencies, you got to wait on those motors. So I'm sitting here in a rag chew with these guys and then I see this spot pop up so here's what I do punch up 14 go to 236 where the station is uh, spotted at I'm ready to go listen to the click and that's the Elecraft KPA 1500 over here I hope you can see that yep the internal antenna tuner so it's already recorded settings for each of the bands and so when i change i'm ready to go there's 18 14 7 three and a half or three point eight six you know what i mean 80 meters 75 really but you know that's what i mean by ultimate automation you yeah you you know you got a um, multi-band antenna needs a little tweaking here and there or in some cases for me a doublet that is um you know, needs an antenna tuner. Um, but even, you know, other antennas that you may want to want to work on an, on a band that's not resonant for, uh, like the ZS6 BKW is resonant at 29.6 to 29.7, you know, or the, really that upper portion of 10 meters. Um, also 12, 17, 20, and 40, but it can be used uh, on 10 through 80 with a, a antenna tuner now it'll generally need you'll generally need a wide range antenna tuner not a touch-up tuner like the rigs have in them these days uh, the rigs have gotten small the antenna tuners are this relay base and there's really not enough room in there for them to put enough inductors and capacitors to give you a you know to be able to match a 10 to 1 swr and at 100 watts okay that's the deal just not going to be able to fit that into these smaller uh, radio. So, you know, miniaturization, that's another one of those things where we think, ah, uh, you know, latest technology must be best. Miniature, mini, how do you say that? Miniaturization? <laughs> um, making things smaller? Wonderful, right? But then there's trade-offs. So uh, we have to be careful what we ask for. But if you're going to go, you know, with an external tuner, then you can then match, you know, usually at, at least a 10 to 1 um, and use the same antenna for a lot of bands. Well, with an auto tuner like that's in, in this KPA 1500, or as you've heard me say many times on, in the videos about the, uh, the Elecraft KAT 500 tuner coupled to the KPA 500 amplifier, which by the way is really a 600 watt amplifier, um, you get the full automation there as well. Just change bands and you're ready to, to operate. So uh, that's a prime example of See, I could be in here rag tuning with them, jump over there, work that soda station, and then jump right back. Okay, hey, I hope you found this quick tip uh, helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who helped me bring these videos to you. If you want to join that team, um, it's www.patreon.com forward slash N4H&H. Please do me a favor, click that thumbs up, that like button. Helps out with YouTube, costs you nothing. And uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content, a lot of operating tips. And, um, and also, too, if you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you won't miss another video. I generally upload one or two a week. And uh, share the video link on uh, maybe on social media, um, uh, email, a text message, or just phone a friend. Thanks for watching and 73 from N4HNH.